In this video, we'll take a look at what happens when each gear is selected using transmission fluid. Let's go over the valve body. Also known as the brain of the transmission, this controls all the electronics and sensors throughout the unit to deliver different speeds during driving operation. Here is the shift valve body. This is the top part of the valve body. Next is the spacer. This seals the valve body unit and allows transmission fluid to flow through certain orifices and passages. Then is the main valve body. This is the bottom part of the valve body. Next are the solenoids. They're electrically charged and they allow valves to open and close during gear selection. Next we have the shift valves. They'll open and close and are controlled by the solenoid. We've got one check ball. This will allow fluid to flow in one direction but not in the other. Here's your basic valve body setup in the hydraulic system. A couple more things to go over. Here's your filter. It'll filter the transmission fluid before being sent to the oil pump. Below that is the transmission fluid and then the oil pan. And lastly, we have the oil pump. It'll always be pumping up fluid and sending it as a main line to the valve body. We now have all the working components to demonstrate how the hydraulic system works in an automatic transmission. In this video, we'll focus only on the path the fluids take when engaging with clutch packs. This will leave out some paths that are not directly related to the path of clutches. First, we'll start off with neutral. This setup is also applied to park. The C5 clutch must be engaged. The transmission fluid will come up from the filter and make its way up to the pump. The pump sucks in the fluid and sends it out as a main line. In order to complete gear selection into park neutral, the main line has to find its way to the C5 clutch. The main line will make two stops on the way. You must first pass through the solenoid, we'll call trim A solenoid. Next, it must reach what we'll call shift valve 2. Once it passes through and reaches C5, the hydraulic fluid will engage the piston to engage the clutch packs. The hydraulic system can generate up to 260 pounds per square inch of pressure. C5 is now engaged and the car is in neutral park. To shift the first gear, we must engage clutches C1 and C5. In this gear, we leave C5 alone as it is already engaged. In order to engage C1, the main line must branch off and pass through two more shift valves. We must pass through what we call shift valve 3 and the selector valve. The selector valve links directly to the shift lever you use to change gears inside the vehicle. C1 and C5 are now engaged first gear. Automotive for beginners. To engage second gear, we must engage C1 and C4. We leave C1 alone as it is already engaged and disengage C5. As C5 disengages, the fluid pressure taking the C5 path must be exhausted out of the valve body. This will cause trim A solenoid valve to open a passage for the C5 fluid to escape. The fluid will escape back into the pan to be reused by the pump. Now to engage C4, the main line must make its way through two shift valves. 
it must pass what we'll call trim B solenoid, then it must pass through shift valve 2 in that order. However, since now the car is in second gear, it will now use the torque converter clutch. So the main line must branch out and take one more pass through the TCC valve. The torque converter clutch is responsible for matching transmission input speed to the engine speed. C4 is now engaged, we have second gear. Third gear, we need to engage C1 and C3. C4 will disengage and exhaust out of the trim B solenoid valve. To engage C3, the main line will re enter through trim A solenoid and FV2. C1 and C3 are engaged, third gear. For fourth gear, we must engage both C1 and C2. C3 will now disengage and exhaust out of trim A solenoid. To engage C2, main line must pass through three solenoid valves, through the trim B solenoid and now what we'll call shift valve 1, and from there it will pass through the selector valve. C1 and C2 are now engaged, fourth gear. For 5th gear, we must engage C2 and C3. C1 will disengage and exhaust out a C3 valve and trim B. Engage C3 main line passes through trim A and SV2. C2 and C3 are now engaged. 5th gear. For 6th gear, we must engage C2 and C4. C3 will disengage and exhaust our trim A solenoid. To engage C4 mainline, will pass through trim B solenoid, SV1 and SV2. C2 and C4 are now engaged, 6th gear. For reverse, we must engage C3 and C5. Both C2 and C4 will disengage. C2 and C4 will exhaust from SV2. You'll also notice that reverse will disengage the torque converter clutch. To engage C3 and C5 main line pass through trim A to SV2. C3 and C5 are now engaged. We have reverse.
Now that we've gone through all the gears, you can get a good overview of what's happening inside the transmission hydraulic system. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, support this channel on Patreon, and share this video. This is Automotive for Beginners, and we'll see you in the next one.